All right. So this particular question was requested by one of the viewers, and this question came in June 2016. Uh, question number 41 for two marks. Okay. And in this question, we are given this compound, and in this compound, uh, they are asking the uh, chemical shift values of these two methyl groups, which are represented by the bold bond. Right. These two methyl groups. Uh, to which these protons are attached. So they are asking the chemical shift value, not of the methyl group, sorry, of the methyl protons, right? Uh, of these two protons. And these are the four given options. So if you see, in two of the options, we are, we are getting two, two kinds of chemical shifts. That means these kind of these protons are giving a different chemical shift, and these protons are getting a giving a different chemical shift. And in the third and the fourth option, you see only uh, only one uh, one uh, you will see only one chemical shift value. That is these. It is saying that these three protons and these three protons are equivalent. So first of all, we will have to determ uh, determine whether these three uh, protons uh, on this on this methyl and this methyl, whether they are equivalent, are they present in the same environment or not. For that, we need to check the chirality. Okay. So now if you see this particular carbon to which both of these methyls are attached, this particular carbon which I am representing by a black dot, if you, uh, now whether to, if we have to see whether they are chiral or not, now what we need to do is, see, uh, if, if you have seen my homotopic and diastereotopic and enantiotopic protons video, you will be able to understand better. So if you are not able to understand it, uh, then I think you should watch it and I will uh, post the link somewhere over here, okay? So you can go and watch that first. Now in my video on enantiotopic, diastereotopic and homotopic protons, what I ta talked about was the... Uh, the protons which are present on the same carbon, right? But over here, if you see, these protons are present on the different carbon, right? So that particular method which I taught in my video on uh, on the uh, pro on the homotopic diastereotopic protons, over there I talked about protons attached to the same carbon. Now we are talking about protons attached to the different kind of carbon. So over here, what we do is instead of replacing the hydrogen, we replace the carbon. Okay, so we there are two methyl groups. So we'll replace one of the methyl groups and see whether the compound becomes chiral or not. Okay. So over here, if you see, this compound has two methyl groups, so it is achiral, right? Because all the four substituents should be different. But if we replace one of the methyls by some other group, will it become chiral or not? That we'll see. So if we see this carbon, this carbon is attached to over here to this carbon, and this carbon is then attached to the aldehyde group. But if we see uh, from here. It is attached to this carbon. This carbon is attached to another carbon, which which is not attached to an aldehyde group. So this carbon has a different preference. Say it has preference of one, right? Using CIP rules, this carbon has preference of one. This carbon has preference of two. So these two carbons are different, and but these two methyls are same. So you know, so if we replace one of the methyl groups by any other group, we will get a chiral compound, right? So that means these two methyls, you can say, are kind of diastereotopic. You can, I am talking about methyls, I am not talking about a proton. So you can say that these methyls are diastereotopic, okay? So that means these methyls are in a different environment, right? Because over here, if you replace one of the methyls by, by say, let's say chlorine, you will get a chiral compound. Similarly, if you replace this methyl by chlorine, you will get a chiral compound. So these two are diastereotopic, right? Now, uh, I'll tell you how. Now, if you see, uh, I'll tell you why the diastereotopic. For diastereotopic, you need two chiral centers, right? So, one chiral center will be over, present over here. And what about the second chiral center? If you see this particular carbon over here, so there should be more than one center, chiral center, in order for a compound to be diastereotopic, right? So, if you see this carbon, now I'm, I'm talking about this carbon, right? This carbon is attached to this particular carbon which is attached to two methyl groups, right? Then there is also one hydrogen over here. It is attached to one hydrogen as well, right? So two different substituents. This carbon and this carbon are also different. So you can say this is the third substituent, this is the fourth substituent. So there are four different substituents attached to this carbon as well. So this also becomes chiral. This carbon also becomes chiral. Similarly, if you go on to this particular carbon, this, this particular carbon is also chiral. So, I am not talking about how many chiral centers are there, I am just talking about that there are more than two chiral centers present because if you replace one of the methyls by say chlorine, this becomes a chiral center and then there is also another chiral center present just next to it over here, right? So there are more than two chiral centers. So these two particular protons on the methyl become diastereotopic, right? 
So these two protons become uh, on on these on uh, these protons on the two methyl groups become diastereotopic protons, right? I had earlier said diastereo the methyl groups become diastereotopic. Uh, what I meant was the protons become diastereotopic, right? And so, right? Sorry, it stopped. So, and so the uh, diastereotopic protons give different chemical shift values, right? And uh, the uh, see natural protons and homotopic protons they give the same same chemical shift value whereas diastereotopic protons they give different chemical shift value so from here we can cancel out option number three and option number four right now we are left with this option number one and two so if we uh, talk about option number uh, one we can see that the chemical shift values are 1.35 and 5.0 and in option number two the chemical shift values are 0.74 and 1.33 so if you see in option number one we get a chemical shift value for methyl protons as 5.0 which is very very downfield right so that kind of chemical shift value can only be obtained if there is some kind of anisotropy uh, if, if, if the, if the methyl protons are in some kind of anisotropic environment like in case of benzene where you obtain a chemical shift value of 7 for the protons for the benzene protons right so that is because of the ring current because of which magnetic anisotropy is generated right so either that that is one reason or the second reason could be an electron withdrawing group is attached a strong electron withdrawing group is attached to one of the methyls right but since both the methyls are attached to one common carbon and uh, one common group so if if there was indeed a strong electron withdrawing group attached which is not in this case but even if it was then we should, we should have obtained a downfield chemical shift value for both the methyls right but we are obtaining only for one methyl so the only plausible reason for that could be uh, or the justification for this chemical shift value of 5.0 could be some anisotropy that is taking place but if you see in this compound there is no there is no, no kind of anisotropy that is taking place right even if you see this aldehyde uh, aldehyde in aldehyde there is a magnetic anisotropy taking place because of which you obtain a downfield uh, chemical shift for the uh, aldehyde proton but this aldehyde is quite far away from these methyls and because of which this would not be the appropriate reason of the downfield shift of the NMR of the chemical shift value right so overall you can say that this 5.0 chemical shift value for one of the methyl is not justified justified in this case right there is no anisotropy going on in this uh, sp2 hybridized carbon this uh, alk alkene right so be be because of this there is not going to be a much difference in the chemical shift right and this aldehyde is quite far away so if you, if you even if you want to like uh, if you want to uh, if you are not able to understand why this aldehyde is far away you can look at the 3d structure of this particular molecule and it's called as mypenal m y r t e n a l so you can go and look up the 3d structure of mypenal and you will see that these methyls are very very far away from this aldehyde right so the anisotropy generated in the aldehyde is not going to affect these methyls so then you can say clearly that the answer is option number 